Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of the tutorial for Deep River Blues, written by Doc Watson, but for this series of lessons we are focusing on Tommy Amandel's version. Let's quickly pull up the overview of the tutorial. This video, the second part in the series, is split up into two big sections. In the first part we will go over the solo Tommy plays in between verse 2 and 3. In this part you will see a lot of stuff that is lifted straight out of the intro along with a few melodic variations. If you are happy with how the first solo sounds and you just want to skip this video, then please do check out the funky ending of this solo. That part is reused a lot as well in the accompanying part. In the second part of the video I'm going to try to show you how you can create your own version of the solo using roughly the same building blocks as Tommy uses. All clear? Let's dive straight in. So let's continue to solo number two. Now this uh, solo, which is played after the second verse, uh, contains basically a lot of variations on what Tommy played in the intro. But as I saw in, in a certain workshop video somewhere online, Tommy does think about this song as having two main melodies. I concentrated on the first main melody in the first tutorial video on the intro part and I'm going to show you the second melody that Tommy likes to add in in this part and then in the second half of the video I'm hopefully going to be able to show you how you can sort of piece together your own version of the solo instead of playing what is on the tablature down below or, or what you can remember of Tommy's recording you can make your own version of this solo simply by copy and pasting different sections out of the two different solo parts. So combining parts of the intro with the parts you will uh, learn in this part of the tutorial. Now if you're thinking, I'm good, I, I have basically everything I need from the first part of the tutorial, then do not skip this completely, then just skip this video all the way to the end, because there is one fill all the way at the end of this solo that Tommy uses in the accompanying part as well. Uh, instead of using the, the um, single note line. So instead of using that, that single note line, Tommy uses one funky variation. And he, he adds that into the accompanying part as well. So make sure to check out that little film. For everyone else who is here for the, the complete package, let me play through uh, the solo, the second variation or, or the, the, the second version of the melody uh, that Tommy likes to add in and then I'm going to explain each and every variation along the way. Here we go. solo. The solo starts out with the exact same melody as the intro. And then instead of going to the diminished chord on the fifth fret, Tommy drops down the voicing all the way to the second fret. So the exact same fingering, so you start it in the first uh, instrumental part, fifth fret, sixth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret. Tommy takes that exact same chord voicing and shifts it down to the second fret. And he's going to shift it back up chromatically up to the fifth fret. So fret by fret. What's happening is the first chord is together with a low bass note. You pluck the second chord again using the index finger, middle finger, ring finger. And then the next chord you slide up and as you arrive on the fourth fret you pick the bass note. And you re-pick again the same strings for the very last chord as you arrive on the fifth fret. Tommy, I, I actually found versions where he does the exact opposite, where he starts at the fifth fret and he slides down to the second fret. Same technique, picking, re-picking, sliding to the third chord and then re-picking for the last chord. 
and as you slide down to the third fret, you play the bass note as you arrive on that fret. So the same technique instead of going up, sliding down. So both options are fine. And then the very last eighth note of the bar is a little sixth, seventh fret on the G string, seventh fret on the high E string. And then you release everything, all fingers disappear from the neck, just an open E string and you shift back down to the open position. Open E string, down below, open E string, up above, and then you add the ring finger and the pinky on the third fret, G string and E string, and you slide up and back to an open E string. The slide isn't an embellishment, it's not a real quick slide, it actually has to be exact eighth notes. Sometimes Tommy plays only the high E string, sometimes he adds in the B string as well. And then a melody, I, I, I transcribed this wrong actually the, the very first time around. I thought for sure that it was going to be open G string to the G sharp, sort of the main uh, minor to major typical move in blues songs. But Tommy does finger A or fret A. E major chord, but he shifts down the index finger to the first fret on the B string and hammers on to the second fret with the pinky. So, which is a bit strange in terms of uh, fingering in, in the beginning, playing that E chord with the index finger down one fret, but it's exactly the way Tommy does it. So starting on those two open strings, adding in the index finger, adding in the pinky on the second fret. Let's play it up to that point. Moving to an open A string and you're moving down the middle finger and the ring finger to the second fret on the D string and the B string, giving you an A dominant seventh chord. This is the melody for the next bar. In terms of rhythm, a little bit harder. You're starting out with the open A string, and in between you add in the pinky for the high uh, G note on the third fret on the high E string, and you uh, alternate to the bass string on the D uh, to the bass note on the D string, and then you shift down the pinky to the second fret, and that note has to follow up that bass note on the D string really quickly. After you've done that, you add in the index finger on the first fret on the A string and you remove the pinky, giving you an A sharp or B flat diminished chord. Middle finger and ring finger are still where they are, they haven't moved since the beginning of the bar. Melody on that, on, on that dominant chord isn't too hard. Basically straight eighth notes, top E note together with the bass note on the A string. Sounds a bit tense, that chord, that, that's what it's there for. It, we're going to resolve that tension just in a second. So the, um, the exact timing is all eighth notes. So bass note together with a melody note in between on the B string, bass note, and in between bass notes again to the E string. Together with the beginning of that bar. Again, remove everything, play three open strings, G string, B string and E string, and hammer on to the first fret on the first beat of the next bar. So you hammer on to the first fret as you play the first bass note of the next bar. 
that's quite a lot. So the, the most important part is that that melody note, that F sharp on the second fret, play that right behind that bass note on the D string. If you get that right, the rest of the bar isn't that difficult. Let me play those first four bars all the way through. to the next four bars. There was just one little detail I forgot after playing that, that slide going up. Tommy often picks one or two notes as part of an arpeggio just to fill up that blank a little bit. That, that, that's all he does. Just with the index finger that one note in between. Let me play the next four bars. Three, four. the fingerings in this bar you already know it's just a rhythmic variation compared to the very first intro three four in the in first intro you played you play those three notes on uh, the bass note each time now you're placing them in between the bass notes so the very first one is together and everything else is in between the bass notes. Really slowly. Three, four. We're switching to the next chord in front of the second beat. So again, in the previous uh, instrumental intro, it was straight on the third beat. So you had one, two, three, four, and then switching to the next chord. Now we're going to pull that C dominant chord with the G in the bass in front of the third beat as well. Three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're just moving one eighth sooner to that, that chord voicing. You're first playing the third fret on the G string and the B string and then adding in the bass note. Three, four. In between the bass notes each time. Three, four. And then on the B chord, we're playing that B7 chord. This was where in the first uh, part of the tutorial you had to play those quarter tone bends. Now we're ending up on the G chord and all we're going to play is the same Jerry Reed funky picking pattern we used in the first intro. Now we're going to use that on a D chord and the picking pattern is the exact same thing. Two bass notes with the thumb and then one chord in between. The bass notes are always first fret on the A string with the index finger to the second fret on the A string with the middle finger and then we're going to play the top E string and B string on top. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four ending up with a single note lick. Now, one more time, that, that first rhythm, a bit slower. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The ending lick is a pull off from the first fret to the open string, third fret, open A string, back to the third fret. First two notes are 16 notes, everything else is eighth notes. Three, four. All the way with the, the B chord included. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Ending back up on an E chord. Those were the first eight, first eight bars of this section of the solo. Let me play them all the way through. will be familiar or will seem familiar with one slight exception. It's 
almost the same rhythm, but that roll in the fingers is a little bit different. Now, Tommy does the roll differently each time in each bar. So what you get is bass note and the roll starting from the thumb pick on the D string all the way to the high E string. And you're aiming for that last note to land on the beat. One, two. So the rest of that roll, the, the, let's say the approach notes going into that high uh, B note on, on the seventh fret, have to be played in front of the beat. One, two. That's really important to get the timing of this little section sounding right. You're aiming to place that top note on the beat. One, two. The second time around, Tommy goes back to the, a to the open E string, sorry then plays the bass note on the D string separately and then only rolls on those three top strings without adding the thumb pick in again. And again, you're aiming for the top note to be placed right in time. That, that top note is now placed in between two beats, so it's a little less clear, but if you stick to this method, first with the thumb pick, then without the thumb pick, then you, you will probably get it quite close just by feeling it in itself. I wouldn't try to count it out too much. And then the last chord is just plucked, all strings at the same time. And then you do the exact same thing on the uh, E diminished chord voicing. Same, same technique, so first bass string, roll with the thumb pick, then bass string, bass string on the D string, separately, and only rolling with the fingers. Those two bars back to back. And this is something that is actually a lot harder to time out if you do it slowly. It, it just feels a bit more natural if you speed it up. And it's not a, 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 a conscious separate movement with each finger. It's, it's almost more of a movement with the wrist, just rolling off the strings. So I'm not picking separately with each string, which, with each finger, sorry, but uh, the, the wrist is actually doing quite a lot of the work, just rolling off the strings. And when I say wrist, I, I, in my case, it's more of the forearm. So the forearm is rotating and rolling the fingers off the strings. And now we end up on a, uh, this is an interesting section of the solo because now Tommy jumps back in the version I transcribed, jumps back to what he played in the first intro. Most of that is, is uh, apart from that 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 uh, one bar with a funky fill. We're going to have a look at that in just a second. Everything else is the exact same thing as he played in the very first intro. Um, I'm going to come back to this point in just a second. First, I'm going to explain you that last uh, little funky fill is just one bar, uh, but it is something that Tommy adds in a lot in the accompanying part as well. That's why it's important uh, to make sure that you get this down, even if you don't want to play the rest of the solo. So you end up. All exactly the same thing as in the first intro and then you get as you move to that open high E string you add in a low open E string and this was previously where you play the that, that, that open uh, string single note like uh, now we're going to go for a little chord section sounds like this that last 
part, that very last bar, is the exact same thing as we already looked at in the first intro. Those chords in between are an open E string and then ring finger 4th fret on the A string, index finger 2nd fret on the uh, D string and middle finger 3rd fret on the G string together with an open E string. An open E string on top. Picking pattern is, as I saw Tommy play it, thumb, thumb, fingers, and then uh, fingers more uh, uh, precisely index finger and middle finger, and ring finger all the way on that top E string. Then you move down the middle finger and the ring finger down one fret while the index finger stays where it is. So you end up on, again, an open E string, third fret on the A string with the ring finger, and then second fret, second fret with the index finger and the middle finger. So from this to this. That's all you play, thumb, thumb, index finger and middle finger, all sort of muted. And again to an open E string and then we head into... which is sort of the same lick as we looked at in the first part of the intro. Three, four... The most difficult part in terms of timing is, is delaying that bass note. You are pulling the first bass note of the last bar in front of the first beat. Three, four... So there is sort of a gap between that low E bass note and the bass note on uh, the D string. Three, four... And the, the melodic movement, the only thing different is you have that quick hammer-on on the G string, and then timing out that hammer-on and that pull-off is the exact same thing as in the first part of the tutorial. Three, four... So it's just that, that, that little larger gap between the low E string and the D string that I have to watch out for when I'm playing this, not making sure that I don't rush into uh, that bass part. Back to back, those two bars, three, four... Those last four bars, three, four... So make sure you don't miss the transfer to that chord after playing that, that high open E string. Don't waste any time straight for that, that first diminished chord voicing down below so you can move into that funky, funky end chord section. And then straight into the next part. Let me conclude the first part of the tutorial by playing all the way through this version of the solo and then I'm going to hopefully be able to show you how you can piece bits of this together and make sort of your own version as you go along. But first, this uh, version of the, uh, the interlude solo as I just played all the way through. Here we go, one more time. The, the, the complete second uh, interlude or the second instrumental part of the song as I transcribed off of uh, one of Tommy's versions. I can't remember by heart which one it was. But if you watch Tommy play this song in different live versions, you will see that both the intro and this solo section are different each time. But they do mainly consist of uh, the, the parts that I taught you in 
the first uh, tutorial video and in this one. And I'm going to try really quickly to show you how you can piece different parts of this solo together and basically make your own version. Because you can't swap out different parts in between the two solo sections. Remember I talked to you ab about that, that one point And then moving on to the section you already know from the first part of the tutorial. You can also swap back to the, the other variation that you played in the beginning of this tutorial video, namely... You can just place that same part over there. The only thing that you have to change is instead of playing that last chord as a diminished chord, switch back up to that uh, sixth interval on the seventh fret and that can be the perfect bridge into that other variation. So you can either play this and so on or you can play this to the seventh fret straight into the variation we learned in the beginning of this video. So you, you can swap around certain parts uh, in, in, in between the different uh, solo sections. Uh, for instance, we, we now play this fill on, on the B7 chord. Tommy sometimes likes to play that in the intro as well, removing that part with uh, the, the B uh, dominant chord with the quarter tone bends. And just replacing that with and moving straight back up into that E dominant chord on, on, on the fifth fret or sorry on, on the seventh fret uh, you, you can just swap certain sections of this solo around uh, let me just give it a try I'm going to play the first four bars out of the intro then the next four bars out of the solo we learned in this video then back to the next four bars out of the intro and then the last four bars out of this intro it would sound like this That doesn't sound wrong at all. Let, let me turn it around. The first four bars out of the solo we learned today, the next four bars out of the intro, the next four bars again out of the solo of today, and the next four bars out of the solo we learned last week. As you can see, by just swapping out these, these, these rows of four bars, you can already create a solo that sort of sounds the same. It's, it's definitely still Deep River Blues, but you can put your own twist on each and every version. Right now we're working with uh, rows of four bars each time, but Tommy divides it up even more. I'm pretty sure that in this song he's working in sections of two bars, which he can sort of interchange with each other and create a different solo each and every time while still really clearly be playing Deep River Blues. So I hope that is something that, that by just by this short demonstration is, is clear that what the possibilities are, that you don't have to memorize each and every solo. And whenever you see Tommy play a certain solo and you see him play something different the next time, he's still doing the same basic thing. He's just swapping around with certain little building blocks that he knows that they he knows in advance that they all fit together in the end. So just try juggling this around. Even try working in those two bars. It's, it's, it's not that difficult. Uh, for instance, you can play uh, the, the, the intro section of what we learned today. with 
the next two bars we saw in the previous solo. Also remember you have the difference between sliding up and sliding down on that diminished chord. So there are even little variations that fit within one bar instead of two or four bars. So you can basically create your own solo on the go as soon as you are familiar with those building blocks. That all starts by just playing the first solo as it is, playing the second solo as it is, and then just trying to figure out how you can get from one part into the other. For the most uh, parts in this case, it's, it's basically the same thing because all the chords remain the same. The only thing, and that is why I mentioned it separately, uh, that I think needs a bit of an extra push is if you want to head over to that... Uh so I, I really thought that that little section needed that one push of that accent on the 7th fret. That is why I mentioned it separately. Once you get the solos down, just try experimenting with this. Try four bars variation, uh, try two bar variation, try certain variations like the slide up and down on one and the same chord. And you will hopefully soon see that there is nothing magic about Tommy creating all of these different uh, solo sections seemingly on the go. He is just very, very well prepared uh, and he knows certain approaches to each and every chord he is playing within this song. Have fun working on this. I will be back next week with the single note solo and that is something really special. Maybe really unexpectedly, almost my favorite uh, section of this whole song. See you next week, we'll talk about it then. Bye bye. <laughs>